It's a pleasure to have everybody here today. So um, I, I basically, in my own way, I'm going to begin with a story of gratitude and just share with you uh, a reflection on uh, the local food system, I guess. So I'm going to start um, in terms of a little bit of a description around the food system in Waterloo Region prior to 2000. Prior to 2000, um, there was a lot of activity in Waterloo Region regarding um, food and agriculture. There was, of course, a large agricultural sector, which was a combination of small and larger farms. There was a well-established emergency food sector with many strong institutional actors who in turn linked to smaller neighborhood and community centers. And some of those institutional actors were and continue to be the House of Friendship, the Food Bank of Waterloo Region and the Cambridge uh, Self-Help Food Bank. There were many community gardens sprinkled across the three cities of Kitchener, Cambridge and Waterloo and the Community uh, Garden Council of Waterloo Region worked tirelessly to promote these gardens um, and to link uh, gardeners to resources so they could function uh, smoothly. Nutrition for Learning, which uh, had launched in 1997, was providing school nutrition programs in Waterloo Region. There was an um, organic production center, uh, sector in Waterloo Region um, with well-established private sector contributors such as Fenning Organics. There was a thriving community nutrition worker program in which community-based uh, peer trained their community, trained other community members on how to prepare healthy meals and with food safety in mind. There was uh, the, working set, uh, the working center, which uh, was running all kinds of uh, locally based um, food. So just to say um, is that um, there was a lot going on before food systems planning got going in a formal way in Waterloo Region. So in early 2000, um, the uh, region of Waterloo uh, Public Health went through reorganization and something called the Health Determinants Planning and Evaluation Division uh, was formed. And it became the first public health unit uh, division in Ontario with a mandate to address the social determinants of health. So what are the social determinants of health? Um, I'm using here the Canadian Public Health Association definition. The social determinants of health are the social and economic factors that influ influence people's health. Um, and so those can be both positive and negative. So one social determinant of health is income and working conditions. So if you make a great uh, living and you have an interesting job and you have control over your work environment, that would mean that social determinant of health is really improving your quality of life. If you have a poor paying, tenuous job with poor working conditions, that social determinant of health is going to be very much working against your quality of life. Region of Waterloo Public Health saw the creation of a healthy local food system as a way to promote the social determinants of health due to its potential to influence the physical well-being of residents, to improve the environment, to stimulate economic growth, to preserve the vitality of rural communities, and to build a sense of social connection. Now, I, I was just actually thinking that this now seems quite obvious. At the time, though, it was really, uh, um, we were sort of, uh, I think, taking a chance by, by coming out with this, this statement. So the challenge uh, for the Health Determinants Planning and Evaluation Div Division was to take a theory that suggested public health had a key role to play in advancing the social determinants of health at a local level and put it into action and achieve meaningful results. And all this work of the Health Determinants Planning and Evaluation Division was really grounded in the theory of health promotion and health promotion is the process of enabling community residents and organizations to increase control over and improve the social, environmental, and economic determinants of health by working with them to identify the, the issues that are important to their health, broadly defined, and building capacity over time to address these issues. So the region of Waterloo Public Health was an initial catalyst in advancing health and community food systems work. However, over time, these efforts were complemented and strengthened by other regional government departments and other local governments, school boards, organizations and networks, such as the Waterloo Region Food Systems Roundtable. And so to go back to the whole idea of health promotion, capacity building, much of public health's work was to really um, work with community partners so they could embrace 
some of these food systems projects and initiatives and take them on. And the really wonderful thing about this is that many of these initiatives are ongoing and uh, they're so, um, so much part of the work of community partners now, they've completely forgotten about public health sort of initial catalyst role. So what did the healthy community food systems work look like? Well, from 2000 to 2005, um, there was really significant outreach to the agricultural community. And um, uh, we launched something called the Buy Local, Buy Fresh map, which was a way of um, highlighting all the local um, farmers. And um, it was uh, an attempt to create um, farm gate sales. And we also worked to create and fund an organization called Food Link Waterloo Region because we were keen to have um, a nonprofit entity that could, um, in its own way, act um, as, as, the, as the organization that would link local farmers to local consumers. We also were really engaged in planning for the third National Food Security Assemble, Assembly, which took place here in Waterloo Region, and that in turn launched Food Secure Canada. That happened in late 2005. And there was also in a lot of work building relationships with our planning department colleagues at the region of Waterloo. So I'm really skipping ahead here. Um, and there was a publication of a report in 2005 and the authors were Mark Schwerb and Ellen Desjardins and it was called, called Towards a Healthy Community Food System in Waterloo Region. And this, I've been asked to comment on stakeholder involvement, and this report was vetted and guided by an advisory committee of local food stakeholders. And it drew on extensive local research that had been carried out or commissioned by Region of Waterloo Public Health from 2000 to 2005. So using that um, uh, as a background um, piece, it, the, the Towards a Healthy Community Food System report presented an overall goal. And the goal um, was, that all residents have access to and, and can afford to buy safe, nutritious, and culturally appropriate food that has been produced in an environmentally sustainable way and that sustains our rural communities. And the report had seven object objectives to ensure that all residents can afford to buy the food they need to sustain health, to preserve and protect Waterloo Region's agricultural lands, to strengthen food-related knowledge and skills among consumers, to increase the availability of healthy foods so the healthy choices are easier to make, to increase the viability of farms that sell food to local markets in order to preserve rural communities and culture, to strengthen the local food economy and to forge dynamic partnerships to implement the plan. So then this led to the endorsement by that group of, of, uh, of the Towards a Healthy Community Food Systems Plan with the added recommendation that public health continue to provide administrative and research support to the Waterloo Region Food Systems Roundtable. So what was the role of the Waterloo Region um, Food Systems Roundtable? At its inception, the Waterloo Region Food System Roundtable was a networking and policy advocacy group working um, that worked to build a strong voice for a healthy food system in Waterloo Region. And there, were, there was quite a lot of thought into representation at the time. There were 18 representatives from key sectors of interest in the local food system. And those representatives included local farmers, emergency food providers, food processing, food distribution and retail and health professionals. And the round table, because it was away from government, it was sort of a, an independent entity um, of community volunteers, was able to advocate for important policy changes because um, it was free to do so. So a little later on, um, the round table worked hard uh, to um, go forward to develop a local food charter. And it did, um, it did again, stakeholder outreach uh, to achieve this end and it sought endorsement um, of a local food charter from um, uh, regional council. And it also um, talks about the need for a, a, a like food systems planning and a food system strategy in Waterloo Region. Um, I think you had folks come to talk to you from, um, from Seeds of Diversity. And, and if my point is anything today, it's that everything links to everything else. 
So now I'm going to ask about next steps for food system planning in Waterloo Region. And here I don't have the answers. I can just help pose questions. Certainly in a different place now um, in terms of uh, recognizing and promoting Indigenous food sovereignty. I understand there's an Indigenous food sovereignty collection uh, collective in Waterloo Region, which acts at a grassroots wrap of, at a grassroots collective working to restore the land and creating community. Um, you know, this, this is um, a new and growing development and I'd be utterly fascinated to grow about, uh, to learn more, but we certainly know in the region of Waterloo that um, there's so much to be done in terms of uh, uh, reconciliation um, with, with, uh, our, with indigenous folks and indigenous re uh, residents. So I guess it's more a question, how would future food systems planning link to that? What, what are the mechanisms? Who leads? What, 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 how, does this, how would this affect new governance structures? All I can do is ask these questions. Um, and I also think that um, there's, there's been quite a, a call for greater inclusion of racialized communities in food systems planning. I, I think just to, to finish, um, I'd like to introduce you to one of my all time favorite concepts in local government. I, I do a drum roll, but I don't have a drum set. But in any case, I, I think it's really important um, and, and helpful to think of the whole concept of network governance. And it's the whole idea that, um, you know, we're really in a new world. Um, we're facing increasingly complex and ever-changing social, economic, environmental, political, and technological um, challenges. Network governance, broadly speaking, are mechanisms to convene various partners together who transcend trad traditional boundaries. Um, so that means you're working with members of government, members of the private sector, civil society, um, and, and representatives of different services, education, health, housing, policing, etc. And you're all coming together and um, trying to, um, you know, develop a mechanism for decision making um, so these issues can be effectively addressed. Network governance can take part, it can take, can be sponsored from a local government. Um, but it doesn't have to be led by government. It can also be led by funded agencies or nonprofits. But from my perspective, it's really an important um, development. Um, and I think it would be worth um, taking a look at in terms of next steps of comprehensive food systems planning in Waterloo Region. We have a long way to go. But anyway, that's been a really... Um... Yeah, insightful conversation. And I really appreciate uh, the questions that people have contributed and, and Catherine, all of your sharing about uh, 20 years of perspective on, on this work. Um, it's been so inspiring. So I uh, thank you very much. Well, thanks everybody. And uh, yeah, thanks Stephanie for, for teaching this course and, and thanks to everybody who's enrolled in it because I really do think uh, food is really important for a healthy future in so many ways so I'm delighted that so many of you have signed up and um, are, are going through this wonderful learning process together.